Alright, this is Justin from Justin Williamson Photography and I was just recently asked what do I use to edit my photos and my main program is Picasa 3 which is right here and it's made by Google and it's a free download you can just get it by uh, going to Google and typing in Picasa and you'll see it and I believe I have right here picasa.en.softtonic.com looks like that's the uh, that's the Windows version right there and I have a Mac so mine is at picasa.google.com as you can see Intel Mac OS X 10.5 plus and that's where you can get it if you have a Mac but I'm guessing most of y'all probably have Windows so here it is right here for you all and it's free now I chose a picture to edit for a couple reasons well one is I haven't edited this one before. Actually, this is a throwaway that I didn't even use, but it looks like it'll be good for the purposes I'm trying to do here. And I see a bunch of different things we can do to it, so it should be good to show you all how I edit my pictures. And first things first, you got your little toolbar up here. That's where you can crop and retouch and add text and do all that. You can also edit in Picnic, which I've never done. so. I don't know what to tell you. Then you can come over here and finally tune. You can add more fill light. You can blow it out. You can add highlights. You can bring more shadows into it, which I use a lot. And you can change the color temperature to make it you can almost make the seasons you know make like make it look like fall or make it look more of a nighttime shot or early morning shot. You can do whatever you want. You can also choose colors from inside of here to to mess with it. We'll just undo the tuning. Then you come over here and this is where you can make it like a sepia image. You can make it black and white. You can warm it up. So you got saturation, soft focus. You can sharpen, you can put a glow on it you can do graduated tint so I could make the sky a little darker but not affect the other parts of the picture and you can all you can feather it and do whatever you want and make it as drastic as you want or not you can also choose different spots and uh, have part of the picture black and white do the rest in color you can do whatever you want then you come over here and this is where I do a lot of stuff you can do a it's called Holga ish and make your make your uh, photos look like they were taken by a plastic camera which I use that more and I use black and white because I just like the effect it does and you can of course edit it you can fade it fade it in fade it out to make it you know however drastic you want you can do a bunch of stuff cross preference or cross process I do that a lot HDR you're gonna see me use that a lot Lomo ish makes it look like it was taken with a with a toy camera and I use this one a lot that's usually my starting spot when I'm doing outside pictures because it brings out so much color and in a second we'll get into it and then over here you can do you can boost the picture I mean that right there is a great starting point alone you know you can change the strength of it you can really blow it out really make it subtle uh, you can do pencil sketches you can you can soften the whole picture sometimes you need to do that bunch of crazy stuff you can add this is where you can add like your your museum mallet or your museum mat to it you can change you can change the thickness of the white part or the black part you can even you can even change the colors do whatever you want all right now let's let's start by working on this photo and what I did with the rest of these photos which I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna start with the low moish so I'm going to make my DSLR look like it was a cheap camera that took the picture. Which I like because of all the color that it brings to it. As you can see, look at the look look down here at the bottom and look at how dull the sky looks in the reflection of the water. And then once you hit this, it just brings that all out. It also adds almost like a little bit of a vignette effect on the sides, which I really like for this picture because there's really nothing over there to focus on and it, it just kind of it just looks nice to me. Uh, we're just going to leave it just like that and we're going to hit apply. Alright, now the next thing I usually do is I'm going to boost. 
I want to really make the colors pop. But as you can see, although it looks great down here, and the uh, the little sunset hitting the water, it's obviously blowing out the the uh, the grass, the tall grass and stuff over there. So we're gonna have to bring this down. And I like to feather that in until I'm happy with it. So let's go. Let's go about right there. And now you can really see the reflection of that grass in the water. And it kind of, you know, kind of plays a trick on you, making it look like that's land and stuff, which I really like. So we're going to apply that. Now, one thing I usually do after doing that, I'll usually go up here to HDR-ish. And what that does is it will, HDR is high dynamic range. And what it's going to do, it's going to really, it's going to really bring out the characteristics. As you can see, that's fully done. It, it really blows everything out to where the fine detail comes out. And I usually go about right here with it. Let's go right there. As you can see, it, it kind of, let's add a little bit less. As you can see, it, it, it brings out the individual blades of grass there. And it just really gives it definition. I don't want to do too much. I hope you can really see it good though. Alright, I'm going to apply that. Now one of the reasons why I chose this shot, if you can see right here where my mouse is, that's a, that's a piece of trash. Now, I'm going to show you one thing you can do here. And I'm going to go ahead and do it now. I don't, I mean, it doesn't, I don't usually do it in this order, but this little wrench, which you may or not be able to see, there's these toolbars up here where the mouse is. You might not be able to see them. You got, you can crop, you can straighten red eye auto you can you can there's some auto things you can do here that the picture will just guess what you want and just try to make it look good all right now I'm going to use this called retouch you're going to hit that it's going to zoom in now I'm going to choose my brush size and I obviously just need a little just enough to cover that area I'm going to click it and I'm going to come over here and blend it in with the with the natural water line and I'm just going to click it again and as you can see that trash is gone and no one will ever know it was there and then we'll just hit apply as you can see the trash which was right there is now gone so now I'm going to head over here where you finally tune the lighting and color of the picture and I can really bring out that grass if I want to really make put some definition into the clouds or I can bring it back make it sunnier or really bring it back and just really make the sky blue I like to go all the way to the right with it on this one just because these I want the definition of these clouds I want them to be nice pinks and a little bit of a turquoise down there and stuff bring out those colors and let's see I'm also gonna I don't know just a little bit of shadow to make the picture just a little bit darker here on the edges and then highlights and stuff I'm, I don't think I'm gonna do anything with that no I don't need to do anything with that I don't need any fill light I don't need any of that let's see let's see what warmify does I can warm it up and really make the sky have more definition to it bring out some more pinks a little bit of yellow start coming out let me undo it and see see what the difference is Let's do it just for the sake of doing it. Just to give that picture more of a, I don't know, more of a fantasy look, I guess. Saturation, I don't need saturation. But if I, if I, if I do click on saturation and go all the way down, I make it black and white. If I go all the way up, I mean, you're destroying the picture, but you can get the idea. You, you're going to really blow out those colors, which I don't need saturation. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I don't need, I'll just show you what soft focus is soft focus I can make it as big as I want I can as soon as it catches up here I can blur out the corners and just focus on let's say this car here on the on the overpass but I don't really want to do that there we go or I can focus over here and make all of this blurry but I mean it's not needed here on this picture so we can cancel that let's see do I want to let's do the graduated tint just to do it as you can see it's 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 bright up there right now but as I bring the tint down I kinda give it 
kind of give it a, uh, a darker effect up there on the clouds. So let's just do that for the heck of it. Apply that. I mean, some of these we don't even need to do, but just for the sake of doing it. Tint, I could tint it. I could do any color I wanted to. Yellow would be kind of cool. I don't need to. I don't really want to, but as you can see, you can just go through here and pretty much any color in the rainbow here you can do. But we don't need to do that, so we'll cancel. Let me show you the focal black. Right. Did I already show you the focal black and white? You get the idea. Just and you can make it. You can make it big. And let's say we just want the. We want half the picture to be in color, half the picture to not be in color. I've done this before and had some cool effects with it. You can bring the sharpness up to where. To where you can actually see the circle. But you don't want to do that. But. Let's say about right there, I got half black, half in color, which sometimes is a really cool effect, but I don't need it. So let's cancel it. So there's nothing really else there. 1960s, you can do like a 1960s look. Fade it in. If you want some more browns in there, you can go really 1960s to make it look like an old picture. You can also change the background color. As you see here, you got rounded corners, which you can click off if you want. And we don't need this, so let's get off there. Cross process is one that I do a lot of. But sometimes I just blend it. Because I don't really always want it like that. So sometimes I'll come in and somewhere between halfway to the middle. Or a little bit further towards the... Towards nothing. I'll use just to bring out certain colors. So... I'll go about right there with it. Let's just do it for the heck of it. As you can see, I mean, the picture's already looking a lot better than what it was. Vignette, that's where bring a little bit of darkness around the photo and you can bring the size. You can make it, as, you can make it big. You can strengthen it. I use this one a lot too. Just because I want to, if I wanted to draw the attention more towards the center. But for this one, we really don't need to do it. So, let's see, is there anything else? Oh, you can do little things like make it like a Polaroid. Uh, let's put a museum mallet on it. A museum mat. I keep saying mallet. Let's put a museum mat on it. Let's make the, the outside of the frame big. Let's bring the inner just a little bit bigger. There we go. We'll frame it up. It looks nice. Makes me almost wish that I, I had uh, included this picture. So, we'll apply that. Alright, now, real quick this is what we started out with as you can see you can probably see why I didn't choose it it's a pretty pretty bland photo and I had so many photos of a similar similar from the similar spot that I think the reason I didn't choose it was because of this car right here but and it wasn't worth going through the trouble of trying to uh, Photoshop it out alright so there's there's what we started with and here's what we've ended with and as you can see with this program which is free and you can download you can pretty much take any image and do what you want with it and come out with something that people actually want to look at and we can do just just for the heck of it where's it at? oh it's right here let's put uh... let's put P I C Picasso just to show you this real quick if I wanted to add some text to it, you can go right there. We can let's make the font. Let's go. Let's go 48. Let's make it really visible. Let's bring it right here in the center. You can italicize it. You can underline it. You can do all that. You can play around with with the colors here and make them. See if you, as you can see it's white right here and black right here so as I bring this slider over it brings out more of it let's put let's put a little bit of let's put a little bit of white in it let's uh let's change the font what's one one that I really like is this uh where is it tons of choices here oh that's I think it's that one one of these I like. Doesn't really matter. Let's go with that one just for the heck of it. As you can see, we can put that right there. 
let's apply doesn't really do anything for the picture but you see what I'm you see what it does and you can also do the fill light here from from this little main wrench which to be honest with you I never really do it from here but as you can see once you put like a museum mat and everything anything you do after that is going to affect that as well so as you can see it's blowing out the the borders and framed as well as the picture so keep that in mind and don't forget you can always go back and as you saw I did boost earlier I mean you can do it as many times as you want you can come back after you've edited it for five ten minutes do it again bring it down and say hey I want it about right there it's little subtle changes like that that once you layer and layer and layer you finally get something you like so let's apply that and now I'm also I'm also gonna show you one extra thing let me I'm gonna save this to my desktop okay it says image already exists because I've got the before up there alright we're gonna replace it wait for it to do its thing alright there we go now I'm gonna close Picasso down and we'll go to my desktop here and as you can see it took the before and turned it into the new one because I replaced the image this is a program right here that you might also want to get it's called Bigasoft WMV converter and the reason why I do that is these file sizes once you've edited them as severely as I have and put all this stuff into it you get a really big file size and you're probably not going to want to email that picture to somebody or put it it just they're just so big that you need to you need to convert them to to a, a smaller jpeg size basically so i'm going to open this up and this is also free and you can download it the only downside is every time you start it up you got to hit this remind me later to buy this thing which i'm not going to buy alright there we go so there's the biggest off WMV converter now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our picture which we saved to our desktop this picture right here looks all pretty got Picasso written all over it it's ready to be transformed into a smaller size JPEG so that when you go to email it to somebody and show them your proud work you don't have to just send one picture per email because of how large the file size is you can send 5, 10, however many, whatever the limit is, but you can send more than one and that's the important thing. So what you're going to do is you're going to take it directly from your desktop, you're going to put it, you're just going to drag it right on in, let it go. Now I've already set it up to where it's, it knows it, want, it needs to be a JPEG, but you could just go in here and you can, you can also do videos and stuff with this program, which is another reason why I use it. So it's already set up for JPEG. Then once you hit play, it's going to ask you to buy it. You're going to say no, thank you. And there it is. Now, you can go ahead. It saved it. It just saved it to my desktop, which I'll show you in a second. But go ahead and take the file that you just that you just used to that we just the big file and just go ahead and chunk it into your trash can because you don't need that anymore. And now this is our new file which is in a nice little compact size so that we can share it and show everybody the beautiful picture that we just made. So basically that's what you need. Get yourself Picasso, get the biggest off WMV converter, and the two of them together will give you what I believe is some great edits and stuff you'd be proud of. So thanks for watching. Once again this is Justin from Justin Williamson Photography. Make sure you keep updated with my page, check it out. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.